So as you look ahead to that, um, the risk reward for the biggest stock in the market, says Jonathan Krinsky, Apple looks quite poor to us. That's what he says. He joins us now to tell us why he thinks that. And I can't imagine it's much more, Jonathan, that the fact of what I just said, that the stock ran as far as it did in the period of time in which it did. Is there any more to the story than that? Um, yes and no. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, you know, the basic thesis here, it's had a 20% rally off the lows, almost identical to the move we saw in late March, which, by the way, was right ahead of its... Um, of its last earnings sprint. Um, and so, you know, the run up into the earnings sprint always makes you a bit cautious. Um, it's also got the 200 day moving average overhead around 158. So that's another area to uh, to keep in mind. And then we're also seeing some, you know, upside exhaustion signals, just different metrics we we focus on, you know, similar readings that we've we've seen Apple stall in the past. So you kind of add that all up. Um, I do think the risk reward is poor here. And the other issue is that it's kind of been treated as a safe haven. You, you haven't really seen to the same extent the rally in, in names like Google. Um, and I think as you know, some of the other names have, have shown more downside risk, investors have, have moved into Apple and kind of used it as a safe haven. And so I think now um, there is a lot of, uh, I, I, would, you know, I would almost call it a little crowded as a long idea right here. I mean, it's no different than what we said months ago when we said these mega caps had almost become defensive plays. Uh, or proxies of, of where to be in the market. Are we returning now to that same environment in a, in a world of uncertainty? Yeah, you know, you're, you're seeing it in, you know, mega cap healthcare, same, same, type, of, uh, same type of theme there. Um, and we would note, you know, look, if, if you have to be invested, then obviously you're going to go up uh, in quality and, and up in the defensive factor, right? So, you know, defensive names in bear markets do go down less, but that doesn't mean it's a good buy rate. Right it doesn't mean the risk reward is good. So we understand why investors have been, you know, moving up the quality scale risk, you know, economic data is deteriorating and trends are still weak. So that makes sense to us. But from a pure, you know, absolute price perspective, I, I think Apple is pretty poor risk reward right here. What about the NASDAQ in general, given the move that, that we've had from the lows? Yeah, um, I mean, look, you've seen a pullback in in rates, which has you know certainly given a boost to the growth part of the market. Um, by our work, you know, we're probably you know seventy to eighty percent through the rally um, in the Nasdaq by our work. So you know, our, our thought coming in the last few weeks was that you would see this kind of um, uh, push pull where the the weakest area of the market saw a bounce and the strongest area of the market saw a pullback. So we've seen this conversion in um, you know, in high momentum and low momentum names, and that's given the boost to the NASDAQ. But we think, you know, we're, we're the bulk of the way through this, and then as we start getting into August, um, we think correlations are going to rise again, and that's going to lead to that, you know, final drop for the S&P that we've been looking for. And you're still looking for that? You still think yeah, we that still, we're, you, you still think we're going to put in a new low? Yeah, we, we've been calling for 34, 3,500. Um, you know, we got down to 36, 60 or so, um, but we think rallies above 4,000 are, are good opportunities to reduce risk ahead of that move lower. Um, again, and the, the reason being, uh, we just never saw that full-fledged capitulation. I know you've been talking about some of the flow data, um, some of the positioning. Clearly, on the institutional side, positioning has come in, but we think um, on the retail side, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of ways to go on the capitulation factor. Well, because we still had a significant number. Uh, at least as you know, technicians look at it of 90 plus percent volume down days, you know, what, what more do you need to see? Well, you know, again, if you can look back every major market bottom of the last 15 years, um, there's a couple of key things that have that have happened at every major bottom that we didn't have this year. One of them was the VIX curve, which we've talked to you about getting a, a pretty good inversion there. We haven't even come close to that. And then you talk about downside volume. So we look at uh, downside volume on a 20 day basis. Every major bottom hasn't happened until you've gotten that above 60 percent. And we're, we really only got to like 56, 57 percent. So, you know, again, we got close. It could be different this time. But again, when you, you kind of add up all the pieces to the puzzle, you have economic data deteriorating still. Um, it just feels like us. We're not quite out of the woods yet. OK, we'll leave it there. I appreciate you joining me. Have a good weekend. We'll see you soon. That's Jonathan Krinsky, too, BTIG.